this letter's still going. It's amazing. Welcome to episode 112. Sorry, I had to skip a week. There was a little health issue. Not with me. Just saying. Uh, but everybody's fine now. Right. Yeah, everything turned out fine. So uh, then I had to run up there and blah, 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 stuff. stuff. But where was I before that? Indianapolis. Nice. Dayton first. Dayton was a ton of fun. And I don't usually like to do gigs if they're on a college campus because sometimes they have weird alcohol rules. And I don't think the termites like to... The termites need to be free with their liquor. They need to be free to drink all they want and sometimes, but this gig was on the campus of Butler, the who? Bulldogs. Um, And it was a blast. But they say they do all kinds of shows. And here's the other reason I hate doing shows on college campuses, because I can never find the goddamn building. Well, do, do you have your map? Yes, I have. Go around the science building, and then you're going to see a statue of our founder. His name's Bob. And then when you get to this statue, it's a roundabout. Hang a right, and you're going to go past the student dorm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, but this one was super easy to get to. Had Michael Somerville uh, as the opener. He's very funny, and he's really fun off stage too. Oh, my God. All we do, well, I, well we, do, we drink, and we do a lot of betting. I, mean, yes. I, I don't know if I should have just said that a yeah. lot. His wife knows. She knows. Um, uh, but that, And then I got to meet the president of the university. I've never met a, a president of a yeah. university. Or is it a college? What is it called? College? University. university. Yeah, Butler university. I don't even know the difference. Butler University. Butler University. Yeah. All I know is my mom always picks them in the uh, March Madness pool. Yeah. She's a big fan. And why? Who knows? It's got to be something random, like their uniforms or... James Danko was the president, and he had his uh, family with them and stuff, and they came backstage. He was a very, very nice person, and he really, really liked... He loves the mermaid joke. He, he says he walks around saying it, and that makes me laugh that the president of a university is walking around going, I don't know, somebody stopped one once. <laughs> <laughs> good for him for having a good sense of humor. And his family was very nice, too, and um the, it was sold out it was a beautiful theater. it was like spaceship i always put the theaters on twitter and uh, instagram if you guys ever want to see the insides of all these places it's a very fancy very fancy i looked it up it's it's expensive to go there for the midwest it's super pricey yeah but you know maybe people get scholarships i don't know how all these kids are. i look at all these kids on all these campuses you know i was down in columbia missouri and all the children frolicking around and i think i don't know where they all get all this money <laughs> cornell when i was in ithaca Look yeah. at all the happy children. Yeah. It's like a hundred grand or some shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not happening when you're one of seven. Nobody's paying for that shit. Um, I got tons of stuff backstage. Um, this was really cool. Somebody gave me, it's a very fancy box. It's uh, syrup, which I can't wait. Then when the kids come and I make waffles, I'll be eating this syrup. They will not. <laughs> Tennessee whiskey barrel aged syrup. And it's it's an Indiana guy. Cool. His name is Tim Burt. I mean, his packaging, it's, it's not just a man that made this in his right. house. He actually makes this for a living. Right. Um, his crazy farmhouse in rural Indiana. Tim, along with Angie and the rest of the family, makes some of the best maple syrup everywhere, anywhere. Cool. Oh, Canada might fight on that, but yeah. a little pushback we'll on ca it. Canada. We'll Speaking of which, Paddles, yeah. you'll take responsibility <laughs> no. as a Canadian. No. For the wackadoodle that busted into Pelosi's house. And his head. What? Oh. He's a Canadian. Okay. Yes. Uh, the, 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 thanks. Yeah. So shout out. Thank you from Termites, Aaron and Tiffany, Gracie and Pat. Um, for the, uh, they held on to their tickets before COVID. Nice. Yeah. I didn't even realize I, that was on sale before COVID, he but I'll try. Been a Canadian for a long time. He hasn't been a Canadian for 20 years, but. He's living in a storage he's unit. He's living in a storage unit. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, there's a lot of that going on on the West Coast these days because of everybody's out of money and now they're stuck out there and what are you going to do? And then Indianapolis, um, well, that came backstage. And then Dayton, I got somebody brought me a bunch of Dayton Dragons stuff, which is what, that's their minor league team the, for the Reds. Yeah, so I have a lot of Dayton. I forgot. I, oh, no, I, got, I can tell you because now I keep this shit straight backstage unless the openers get to it first and just start randomly eating. Um, but I can't, Beverly, I can't read the name. Uh, thanks for coming to Dayton. Here's some Dayton Dragons. 
I can't read. My eyesight is terrible. Thank you, Dayton Dragons person. And I even have the card. It's Halloween, <laughs> it's Halloween squirrels. I'm going to send that to Lou. I'm going to re-gift a card. How funny is that? Um, oh, and then these people brought me the beer that I'm drinking. Um, this people, which, uh, Britt and John. Thank you. I got all the beer backstage, but I'm saved. This is the best can I've ever seen. It's a sloth. sloth? Cool. Yeah, and it's called Nap in the Hammock. It's oh. from Indy. How, yeah, that's all I would ever drink, but I don't think I can get it here. I, and they have other animals. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm the lady, the the poster lady for idiot who picks my labels, but it's really a good beer. And then um, I got this popcorn. I'm gonna taste from Indiana. This came backstage. I did not let Michael have it from Matt and Jen from Plainfield, Indiana. And I have something to say about downtown Indiana. I have to do it. Uh, well, I'll, let me taste this first. It says popcorn Indiana movie theater butter popcorn. Nice. Yeah. Any other kind, why bother? Oh my god, really? It's delicious. Good? Yeah, really good. I'm gonna have to put that down, or I'm gonna eat the whole bag. Awesome. Um, and then I got Freddy. Somebody brought back in the Midwest. There's like a hamburger place called Freddy's, and it's their fry sauce. That's from the staff. Oh, that's from the staff. In oh, in Indy, yeah. that was nice. Oh yeah, because they listen to the podcast. Mm. Yeah. It's very good. good. It's like a zippier ranch. Nice. It's orange. Weird. No, but I'd rather have this on fries. It's like a mix somewhere between ranch and ketchup. It's fry sauce. Fry sauce. Yeah, it's for French fries. Yeah. Great with burgers, hot dogs, chicken, and of course, fries. Yeah. French fry sauce. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. Um, Indianapolis. Just so you guys know who don't travel around. There's a lot of downtowns that have gone to shit. Yeah. I don't need to name them all and make people feel bad about their city, but no. um, some of them are, like, uh, are apocalyptic. Yeah. Um, I'll just throw out there for, because I think everybody knows, downtown Portland. Yeah. I mean, I tried to walk to this Irish bar for lunch, and there were, like, the kids on drugs had a bonfire in the middle of the street. A street? Yeah, yes, it's, like, apocalyptic. The Apple store... <clears throat> they had these giant fences, enormous fences, because they don't want people busting in through the glass. But, I mean, they were like 25 feet high. They were huge. Uh, but anyway, sadly, a lot of downtowns are struggling. But you know who's not struggling? Downtown Indianapolis. It's beautiful. Uh, it's safe. It's clean. I took a walk, um, just a random walk, and I ended up in the zoo. Um, but I didn't have any money on me. I'm like, damn, I didn't know I was going to walk right into a zoo. I just, I like to walk without a map sometimes just to see what I find. Uh -huh. And then they have a restaurant there, St. Elmo. Oh. And they have this cocktail, this horseradish on this cocktail sauce, horseradish thing. That's like so famous. It was so good. Uh -huh. Michael and I went, yeah. What? What? Oh yeah. No, it's, it was a, it's just the best. You could just go in there and just eat that. Um, but it was so, it was very, very nice. And um, the crowd was great. It was nice to see a downtown that there's, there were 22,000 future farmers of America, the children. Really? The children, yeah. And I, I was asking the bartender, I'm like, there's a lot of girls. I wouldn't expect, not that I'm an old timey, you know, sexist person. Of course, girls can be farmers. I just didn't think there'd be more than half. Oh, wow. He said, well, they're family businesses and the girls, you know. Yeah, they're taking it on. Good for them. They were all very, very young. They were very well behaved. Shout out to Future Farmers of America. But there's really, there's 22,000 of them in downtown Indy. Now, that seems like a lot, but that's the whole country. So yeah. we don't really have that many farmers left, sadly. What, um, what if they marry each other? Oh, if they marry each other, then it, well, yeah, then you got to combine your farms, I guess, right? You got to belly up and do that. I don't know shit about farming. Come on. I could ask my old agent. Her husband is a farmer. Um, uh, so shout out to Indy. It was just wonderful. If you ever want to go to a Colts game, if you're a Midwest person or something, I would highly suggest it. The downtown's fun. There's the zoo you can walk to. And then there's just all these other places where you can walk around. I mean, it's going to start getting cold. So I don't know about that. But summer, fall, Indy's a good little trip. Harry and Izzy's, that was a good car. What was? Harry and Izzy's. Oh, Harry and Izzy's, yeah. We went there for lunch, up in the top in the round part. The football, college football was on. 
Michael was in a betting frenzy. <laughs> Because in Dayton, I got put in gambling jail. You can't do DraftKings. So, no, you got to get your bets in before. But when you get to Indiana, you're out of gambling jail and DraftKings <laughs> and all those things work. Um, speaking of which, Mattress Mac, because right now the series is tied. He, he could still win $75 million. And then there were two videos online. He got, because the Philly fans are well known for they can be rough and tumble sometimes. And But one kid was so excited to meet him, a Philly kid. And Mattress Mac was very nice, took a picture with him, and then fast forward, there's another video of Mattress Mac, and he's like 80, just going, fuck you! Fuck. I'm like, oh my God, he's turned Mattress Mac. <laughs> Whatever they said got him so mad that he's on Twitter being filmed. Um, so that's it. Let's move on to Queen News. Stevie is going out to do a show. I hope it's not a test show. One show in Texas, or in, uh, I don't know, at and Stadium, her and Billy Joel. No. I won't have it. It's like that Irish guy. The worst heckle I've ever heard in the world, ever, ever, in 35 years. And I can say this out loud because we already talked about it on our podcast. Um, and this relates to I won't have it. Tig, there was this Irish comedy festival, and there was a bunch of us over there. And me and David Feldman were done with our show, and I'm like, "Oh well, let's go see, let's go see Tig. She's they're all just in bars. It's literally bars, so you got to be like used to one nighters and shit." And Tig's on stage, and if you know Tig's comedy, it's kind of dry. It's not very expressive. Uh, I like it, but you gotta you gotta know kind of. And the Irish are more into storytellers, a little more animated. I don't know, 20 minutes into t Tig's probably half hour set, this Irish guy stands up and he has a pint of Guinness in his hand. He goes, you're ugly and I won't have, you're ugly, you're not funny and I won't have it. And he slammed his pint and left. I just went, oh my God, I don't know how I would react to that. Like oh. Tig nailed it. She, she, she was like, well, I mean, I don't know about all three. <laughs> like that was funny and everybody laughed, but she's always can be self-deprecating. So she handled it. But I felt like the, I feel like that Irish guy, when I saw Stevie Nicks and Billy Joel, I won't have it. I won't have it. I mean, Billy Joel's fine. And I know that people, love him. they love him, they love him. But I'm just not of that ilk. And I looked on Instagram and a lot of people agree with me. That is a bad matchup because I'm not paying double to see Billy, who's fine. If somebody gave me free tickets, I'd go. Oh. Well, I'm not that big of a fan. Right. I, li I liked all his old stuff, and then I hated that Uptown Girls. That she's an Uptown Girl. Nah. Why? That makes no sense. Stevie and Billy. No, 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 no. I hope this isn't a test show. They're going to throw that out there, and maybe they do it because it's not till November of 2023. So somebody's like, why don't we try it? They've done it to me. I guarantee. Well, you're going to team up with so-and-so. Let's just see, right? I mean, I've never done it that often, but she doesn't need him. And he doesn't need her. He can do that gig in New York. He does a regular baby. He does Madison Square Garden. Why do you need Stevie? I don't understand what's going on here. Well, maybe neither of them can talk to Billy. Maybe neither in Texas? No, Stevie's people are in Texas for sure. At and Stadium? Hey, no, she can't sell at a stadium. She sells out, you know, amphitheaters are 8,000 8, yeah. seats. Yeah. And she was in Huntsville. And some lady in Huntsville made her a witch hat because she was performing on Halloween. Because I was going to go to that one in Alabama, but then the, things, <laughs> emergency, um, things happened. But uh, some lady in Huntsville made the coolest witch hat I've ever seen, and Stevie wore it out on stage. No. Yes. And then the lady's like, here's a ah. video of me crying because she's actually wearing my hat. Because when people get stuff backstage, you don't know. Like people always say to me, did you get the thing? That's why I try to say, yes, I did. I also got these beers too. Cervasis Burkus. Cervasis, 1862. It looks delicious. Um, yeah, I flew it home. Um, so I don't know. I'm not a fan of that incoming news. Okay. Um, don't like it. And Dolly, for the record, announced she's never going on a major uh, tour again. Well, she said she's getting older. She wants to be home by her husband and her family. And what? If, and she's right. Like, what if something goes haywire out on the road? And then you have to cancel and disappoint all those people. And you're getting older. You may not reschedule. I'm just saying. Well, father time comes for everyone. Um, 
But so if you see Dolly, uh, like a, on a, listed as a, you know doing a charity show or or something in Nashville, you should go if you've never seen her because there won't be any other way for that to happen. And everybody else has been very quiet. So all the other queens have been very quiet. Um, we need a new queen. Uh, well, I think the new queen should be Anita Baker. Tay Tay. Come on. No. We can vote. Taylor Swift. It, I love her. Well, she's a business queen. I'll give you that. Thank you. She knows you know how to. Music? I like some of her songs. Yes. I listened to the new album. I need to listen to it two or three or four times because there's apparently hidden messages and the, my twin nieces already know what's in every song. I'm like, how did you pick that out of that? She's a great songwriter. Yeah. I Maybe. But Anita Baker's going back out on tour, too. Oh! Yeah. She posted a very cryptic video of a bunch of cities. No dates. We need an Anita. See if we can get an Anita. I'll take Tay-Tay. Yeah. And I'll take away... Oh, no. Well... We gotta vote. Shaka's pretty quiet. Shaka's very quiet. And I admire that. Because I think she just can sit home and count money and do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you, as Rocky Laporte would say. Um, what? Update! Oh, my God. Well, these are these go hand in hand. So we're going to do them both. And I don't even know what to think about any of this shit. But um, Meta shares plummet Zuckerberg. Meta, face, Facebook, whatever you want to call it. He wants to call it Meta. Meta shares plummet 12% on week fourth quarter forecast and earnings missed. Wall Street has had it of him not letting go of the meta dream. It's not going to happen. It just right. keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah. Nobody wants to come play in your stupid Pong world. No. Not even my nerd friends. No. Um, speaking of Queens, too, I did watch the CMT thing, dedication to Loretta Lynn. Yep. It was fantastic. Yeah. If you see a repeat, even George Strait came off his ranch in Texas. That's pretty cool. He's so handsome still. He is going out on a tour because I had to get my brother-in-law tickets to see George Strait in Kansas City because yeah. apparently, unbeknownst to me, Matt's his biggest fan. Well, I do know. You know, actually, I do know. This is a funny story, and then I'll get to it. <laughs> so I did a benefit once in St. Louis with um, for Tony La Russa uh -huh. for his ARF Foundation, Animal Rescue Foundation, and I made Lewis come and do it. Uh -huh. He likes co Tony likes comedy, 70s rock, and country. Those are his genres. So it's always like REO Speedwagon, it, Eddie Money did one. It did it with him. And then country people. Well, it was Vince Gill and um, Amy Grant. And oh. Lewis had to follow them. That's and Lewis does a big, giant joke about it because he goes, I, yes, I saw the lineup. Tony was doing it like a baseball lineup. And Tony always overbooks. There's way too many acts. We do not need all these people. Right. Lady Antebellum, before they were uh, Lady, a. Lady A, they were there. They weren't even famous at the time. Well, a little bit. But... um. They went first, and then I got to go after them, so that was easy. Tiny famous, tiny famous, tiny famous. And I was, a, I was, a, I had an edge there because it's St. Louis, that's my hometown. But um, uh, he put Lewis after Vince Gill and Amy Grant, and he, Lewis is backstage going, "You invited me here. You go tell him. He's your friend. You go tell him. I do not want to follow the two greatest Christians on earth. You can't bring out the aging Jewish prick after <laughs> these two. They're the great." And then Vince got on stage. It was telling a story about his dad, mm -hmm. and it was funny. Yep. And he goes, "Oh, he's funny too. He's handsome. He can sing, and he's funny." He goes, "Well, I don't have time to go home and kill my dad for a funny story." <laughs> and then Amy Grant came out, and Lewis goes, "Did you see her up close?" I said, I did, over at the buffet deal. He goes, I think she's made of cream. I've never seen a skin color that, that color. They were so nice, though, and they laughed at everything, and we made fun of them. Well, I didn't, but he did. Um, he said, they're not even in the building anymore. They've flown out on the wings of doves. <laughs> and then Bruce Hornsby was the last act, and my mom just kept texting me from the audience, how long is this man going to play this piano? I think we're sitting in an ice rink, and my feet are frozen. <laughs> Bruce Hornsby won't stop. If you ever really want to get your money's worth, go see Bruce Hornsby because holy baloney, he will not stop. Uh, I forgot the point of this story. I don't know why I got sidetracked with that about the benefit. Oh, George Strait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, 
Um, one of my family members has a lot to drink that night and goes up to Vince Gill and goes, uh, guess who my favorite country singer is? I'm like, oh, no, 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 you don't get to do that. Don't make Vince play a game. <laughs> so Vince plays along. And he goes, uh, he picked, like, you know, George Jones. Nope. Oh, no. <laughs> made him keep guessing. He goes, you're number two. You're number two. But oh, guess number, and it was yeah. George. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I know, but you know who doesn't like George Strait's new? His wife, his much younger wife, does not want to be on some 57,000-acre ranch and never leaving, and that's exactly what he wants to do. Nope. Mm-hmm. I'll marry him. I'll go to a ranch and never leave. <laughs> um, You're too mouthy for him. No, well, he probably likes somebody who talks a lot because he doesn't say much. Doesn't. Man, a few words. There were so many people on the Loretta that thing that were great, though. It was really awesome. Dolly did a video. I didn't think she'd come. Um... Little Big Town was on. Uh, everybody that's anybody. Yeah. Oh, Keith Urban. Yep. He's always adorable. I don't really know his songs. I just know what he looks like, and I always just wait to see if Nicole Kidman comes out. They go to Zany's a lot. They go to Zany's, the comedy club in Nashville, a lot, and they stand in line like regular people. I was appalled. <laughs> My friend Brian owns it in Dorfman, and I go, Dorf, that is fucking Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban standing yeah. out front. Get, get him in. Get, yeah. get it. He goes, no, they don't want that. They want to stand in line. Oh. I, well, okay, good for them. I just thought, Dora, I'm like, how'd you miss her? She's seven foot tall. <laughs> and beautiful. She is by far running away with the Zany's line of attractiveness. This lady is the winner. And he is super smoking hot too, but he's tiny. But I don't even know if he's tiny if it's just compared to her. He's a shoddy. He's a shoddy. Well, Kate. Uh, Meta shares plummeted in extending trading on Wednesday after Facebook's parent uh, issued a weak forecast for the fourth month. I mean, the Wall Street people are so pissed. The company said the fourth for the fourth quarter revenue will be thirty billion, thirty billion to thirty-two point five billion. Uh, analysts were expecting sales of thirty-two point two billion. They're not going to make it. No. Meta's revenue declined four percent year. Over a year to twenty seven point billion in the third quarter. Meanwhile, the company's costs and expenses rose nineteen percent. Well, because none of his avatars have legs. We gotta have people that know how to build legs. Yeah. Right? Yep. Can't be walking around as a torso. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Operating income declined forty six percent from the previous year. And I would like to say, uh, this is just a giant. It's just it's failing. And then Jim Kramer. He's the guy on CNBC, the money guy, you know. Uh, he basically, I've never seen him do a mea culpa and basically start crying. Um, he's apologizing profusely because he, he said go all in on Meta. Uh -huh. Yeah. But some people call it uh, one, gam one financial investing strategy. There's actually th a thing called inverse Kramer. So whatever he's, no. yes, it's become that oh bad. That if you, whatever you want to invest, go listen to Jim Kramer and oh don't God. do it. Seriously. <laughs> now, um, now Meta, here's, a, okay. So we got to talk about Elon and Twitter. But he's laying off shit tons of people. And guess who's poaching them? Meta. Mm -hmm. But here we go, Marky, Sparky. Yep. You can't afford it. No. He's going to get more employees. Yes. But well, I guess he thinks he can. Google and Meta poach hundreds of Twitter employees that are laid off by Elon Musk. Now, let's talk about this for one second. I don't know. He's been a ruler for five days. He's, <laughs> he's been our ruler <laughs> for five days. There was a guy who bought a country club, an individual yeah. in Nashville. One guy bought the whole thing, gave all the members their money back. Mm -hmm. It's mine. It's my kingdom now. Yep. Okay, fair enough. You can. It's America. You can. Uh, Elon has decided to buy Twitter. Here's what I, $44 billion okay. for a thing that makes no money. Yep. I don't, I mean, apparently there's promoted tweets and you pay a little something to do that. I've never done it. Five days since he's been our ruler. Mm -hmm. And I'm on, I tweeted this out because it's true. Okay. And only because of the termites. Right. I was um, dealing with the situation um, that took me out of, mm -hmm. yeah. The emergency little situation, it's totally fine now. Um, and all the termites started DMing me or yeah. sending me messages. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's somebody, um, my friend Conchi, uh, my twi termite 
Twitter follower Conchi Gonzalez in Puerto Rico, even even she was like, "Hey, there's somebody pretending to be you," um, and then these all kinds of other. So I'm like, "What is going on? What 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 is everybody talking about?" Right. I hadn't even tweeted anything. Like right. I was busy with other stuff. In five days, um, within two, this is what I tweeted. Within 24 hours of our new dear leader, there's 10 of these fake accounts of me. So it will say like Kathleen Madig 15, Kathleen Madig 14. It's the M-A-D-I-G. It stops at the G. Okay. Um, I said, uh, this has never happened before. I feel like the shit show is just starting. And then there's this weird, like, pumpkin thing. I think it's supposed to be me, and I just wrote, and I also don't understand why I don't have eyeballs. But 10 fake accounts. What is the point in five days? In five days. Mm-hmm. But what's, you know, he's the one saying, we're going to get rid of um, bots. I've, I've lost followers, not many. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. If they were bots, get rid of them. I don't, I don't want them anyway. But for these people that bought fake followers... You're going to watch everything tumble. Right. My termites are real, yeah. 90%. Go ahead, take the 10% of bullshit people out. Right. I would appreciate it. Um, and he wants to charge $8 for me to stay with a check mark. Eight is very specific. It's very specific, and I did the math. Eight, there's 400,000 verified users in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure if that's global America. I think it's the world. Mm-hmm. So times eight, that's $32 million. Okay. You bought it for $44 billion. Now, yeah, you can make that every year, but it's still going to take a long time to get your $44 billion back. I think he got too wrapped up in it. Yeah, he, he loves it, and he tweets all the time, and he thinks it's his power. I don't mind paying mm-hmm. something. Um, so it went from 22 to 8. Well, no, first he was going to charge 20 and then somehow they had a meeting. He's an p- impulsive, crazy person. <laughs> I, the leader of our world here is a cra- <laughs> impulsive, crazy. Like, I don't think Zuckerberg's impulsive. No. I like Zuckerberg less because I don't even feel like he's totally human. I feel like he actually could be an alien or a Dayton dragon. Totally. <laughs> Musk, I just feel, you know, is this spectrumy guy, which can be fine and great, or it can be impulsive. And you need a little though, and he's got emotion. Elon's got tons of emotion. Oh, Zuckerberg, not so much. Right. Um, especially when he's powering down in a congressional hearing. <laughs> <laughs> His batteries are going dead. I don't mind paying if you say that's going to get rid of the riffraff. Then I, the, riffraff. Uh, the riffraff, the bots, the bullshit, the political the bullshit political, things. Yeah. Um, but this is a great... I'm not going to read the whole article, but it's a great. Uh, the Verge always has good writers. Welcome to hell, Elon. <laughs> this is written by <laughs> Nile Patel. You fucked up real good, kiddo. Twitter is a disaster clown car company that is <laughs> successful despite itself. And there's no possible way to grow users and revenue without making a series of enormous compromises that will ultimately destroy your reputation and possibly cause <laughs> grievous damage to your other companies. <laughs> I do think it's going to cause damage to his other companies because this is his toy. He loves it. Yeah. And it, then what about your cars and your, uh, what uh-huh. about Tesla? Um, I say this with other co- confidence because the problems with Twitter are not engineering problems. They are political problems. Twitter, the company, makes very little interesting technology. The tech stack is not the valuable asset. The asset is the user base. Hopelessly, hopelessly addicted politicians, reporters, celebrities, and other people who should know better but keep posting anyway. I do it. I like it because you interact with fans. And if I wasn't a comedian, I would be on Twitter as a voyeur. I would not participate. I would not post. But I would have ESPN, BBC News, Stevie Nicks. Like, I would follow people that I liked. Um, You, Elon Musk, are addicted to Twitter. I agree with this guy. You're the asset. You just bought yourself for $44 billion. You just bought yourself for $44 billion. The problem when he asks it is the people, the people are intensely complicated and trying to regulate how people behave is historically a miserable experience, especially (laughs) when when the authority is vested in a single powerful individual. You just became the king of morality. That's the problem. And you don't, don't, you're not going to want to deal with that. Who's going to decide what can be posted and and all the, you know, who wants to monitor 
I'll tell you who does a great job because I, I read an article. Apparently, TikTok. A company took a bunch of fake news things and sent out 10 videos to Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. TikTok stopped nine of them. Well, the Chinese government does a good job. <laughs> on that, on that they do. Give it to them. <sighs> Here's what the guy wrote. What I mean is you are now the king of Twitter, and people think that you personally are responsible for everything that happens on Twitter. Now, and it also turns out that absolute monarchs usually get murdered when shit goes sideways. True. True. Mm-hmm. You cannot reasonably expect to collect any meaningful re advertising revenue if you do not promote those advertisers' brand safety. That's the problem. Yeah, that's true. If people are yelling out racial slurs and political bullshit and fake news, no, you know, is Kraft or Kraft gonna want to put? Here's our new ranch. No. Trumpy's back on. I don't know if Trumpy's back on yet. They were gonna have a meeting about that. Um, this means you have to ban racism, sexism, transphobia, and all of the kinds of speech that is totally legal in the United States, but reveals people to be total assholes. <laughs> So you can buy, you can make all the promises about free speech, but the dull reality is you have to ban a bunch of legal speech if you want to make money. Because the advertisers won't come. Right. Maybe some of the bro people. Maybe. Maybe. And when you start doing that, your creepy <laughs> new fanboys are going to viciously turn on you, just like they turn on every other social network that realizes the essential truth. True. Um, yeah. Yeah. I won't keep going, but it's, we'll put a link to the article. It's a great article. But that's the problem. Yes. It just, I just don't see it making money. And I think Jack Dorsey is the smart one here, even though I can't say I've liked everything he's done either, and he's from St. Louis. Um, he's going to go open a different version of Twitter, and he got the money. He oh. sold it, and he's, right. yeah, he's going to open up something else. <laughs> Here's who's winning and losing in the, um, <laughs> Yeah, he did. He made Frankenstein and then said, somebody else buy Frankenstein. Hey, do you want my monster? How much do you want for your monster? $44 billion. But I'll tell you what, when he gets out of, can when he gets out of control, he's a terrible monster. Ergo, monster. Here's who's winning in the T Elon thing. Conservatives. Because he's, he's going to say he's going to let anything go. And nobody's going to. That's one group. Um, uh, major Twitter shareholders. Because the... Um, Twitter shares went up with him buying it. So did Doggy Coin too. I don't know why. I'm back to even. I don't know how they're related. Elon's inner circle. Here's the losers. Twitter employees. He's going to lay off 75% of the workforce. Yeah. How are you going to grow? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'd be one of the 25% left because they're going to be like, hey, Kathleen, we, fi we fired Mike, Jim, Susan, and Vicky. Here's all their shit. Take care of it. What? Yeah, same amount of money. <laughs> Losers, Elon's other companies. Elon's a busy man. Aside from running Twitter, he's the CEO of Electric Car Firm and the rocket company SpaceX. Okay. And like my brother said, a lot of his money came from the government. SpaceX and Tesla oh, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the government's not going to get involved with Twitter. Nope. This is a very expensive pet monster. <laughs> uh. mm -hmm. <laughs> Elon's investors. What's his the guy from Oracle that runs Hawaii? That's the king of the of of Lanai. He gave him a billion dollars. Really, Larry, Larry did. did. Mm-hmm. Um. He, here's his investors. Oh, wow. These are people pay, facing possibly facing major losses. Members of the Saudi Arabian government, private individuals, and major banks such as Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, and Barclays. That's why I'm not at those banks. I'm in Central Bank of Boone County, Missouri. <laughs> I, that's where my money's at. Central Bank of Boone County, as in Daniel Boone, Missouri. Come on in and say hi. Come on in and say hi. They love to ask me to come in. Look, I'm not 100 yet. Um, <laughs> Twitter users will have to see, because they're losers too, will have to see how it plays out, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Will people, I don't know, like Stephen King was like, fuck you, I ain't paying it. Really? Yeah. He wrote some tweets that were, because it's not really about the money. It's like, why am I... Well, we're help. We are helping create content, right. but I like it because it opens up the conversation to people, yeah. and real people. Real people. and I like the comedy stuff on there. I, there's so many super seventy sports makes me laugh every day. 
Every day. Every day I love it so much. <laughs> um, I try to retweet them a lot because it's funny. All right. Update. Moving on. That's what's going on in that world. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't feel like it's going to work out. Well, I would just, I don't know. I'd probably still give the $8, even though I don't understand why I'm giving Elon Musk $8. I just want to stay. Okay. I'll pay to stay. But I don't think a lot of people will. Depends on how much you like it. Depends on how much you don't like him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Update. It's $100, a year. It's $100 a year to stay on. What if I just went on as not me? But then the people won't know because now there's all these other fake accounts. That's probably why he did it. My God, I just figured it out. I've never had fake accounts. Instagram has. But not, that's why he's doing it, because he's going to go, well, see, if you don't buy that check mark, look what could happen. Holy shit. See, it takes me a long, long time. I've had all, <laughs> I've had all this information since yesterday. I'm like, I don't understand any of this. Now I do. He wants me to show, he's going to show me what's going to happen. Yeah. They did that. You could go on as fake Gavin Madigan. <sighs> well, if, if I don't keep my check mark, they're going to swamp it right. with a shit ton of Kathleen Madigan's. Exactly. And they're, wow. Well, they've made it very clear. You deserve that beer. <laughs> yeah, I do. Update. Oh, the three people in Michigan convicted of the plot to, to capture the governor. Uh -huh. And what is my favorite part of the story? Uh, they're going to extradite her to Wisconsin. I still have never understood the purpose of that. No. Um, I like Michigan and Wisconsin. Mm, yeah. So, depends on where. Three men accused of supporting terrorism in the plot to kill Michigan's governor were convicted on all charges Wednesday in a trial that focused on paramilitary drills and a fierce contempt for government ahead of the 2020 election. My favorite thing is that their meetings were in the basement of a vacuum repair store. Yeah. Who still has a vacuum repair store? Really? No. Are we taking the vacuum? No. no. Yeah. yeah. Um, they yeah. held gun training in rural Jackson County with a leader of the kidnapping schemes, to Adam Fox. It's all three guys. They're not saying, though, I don't think they said uh, what their sentences are, but they've been convicted for sure. Um, so I'll update you when I find out how long they're going to the, to the, uh, the pokey. Yeah, all three though. God, they did crazy things. They're crazy. Well, you got to have a lot of time off or just be unemployed to participate in this. Hey, Kathleen, are you coming for our paramilitary drills? No, <laughs> no, I have to buy a ticket on Southwest. No. <laughs> Come on, I'm a busy person. But can't find my frequent flyer number on Southwest. Or my drink coupon. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of drink coupons saved up before COVID. <laughs> Update, update on a trader, trader update. Central Indiana man gets five years in prison on capital riot charges. Oh, and he's smiling in his mugshot. Mark Mazza pleaded guilty in June to two of the 13 charges he faced, assaulting a police officer using a deadly weapon and carrying a firearm without a license. You know, if you have an illegal firearm on your person, how about you not run up to a cop? Just saying. Maybe you, maybe you stay back and go with the flow if they make it. Um, he's been sent into prison after pleading guilty, carrying a loaded gun in the Capitol grounds and assaulting a cop during the January 6th riot. A federal judge in the District of Columbia sentenced him on Friday to five years in prison, followed by three years of supervised release. Whoa. The Shelby man, he pleaded guilty. Ba -ba. He bought a revolver loaded with three shotgun shells and two hollow point bullets. Oh, he brought, sorry, he brought a revol revolver loaded with three shotgun shells and two hollow point bullets to the Capitol, but lost possession of the weapon. He then made his way. What you lost your gun? He then made his way to a tunnel area with doors leading into the Capitol building and joined rioters' collective effort to push through at least twenty officers. Def twenty officers defending the tunnel. He held the door to allow other rioters to attack officers with flagpole, baton, sticks, and stolen law enforcement shields. According to court records, he wrestled. He then wrestled the baton from an officer's hand and swung it, hitting the officer. Yeah, <clears throat> he swung at the police. He, and he yelled, this is our effing house. We own this house. <clears throat> we'll see about that, won't we, Mark? 
After returning from the Capitol, he filed a police report claiming he'd lost the revolver at a casino in Ohio. <sighs> there you go. Enjoy your time in the popo. Yeah. I hope that day was worth it. Meanwhile, the guy that you were fighting for is golfing down in uh, uh-huh. with the live golfers. He don't care. He don't care. You're going to the popo. Nope. Holy shit, they found it. <laughs> That's not how I'm supposed to say it. No. Holy shit. They found it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 2,000-year-old Roman road discovered in England, archaeologists believe. Roman road? A Roman. Well, those Romans, you know what? They really roamed around. I got to give it to them. Think how far they went on foot. Uh, I mean, it's just astonishing. If you, There's a Netflix thing about the emperors and stuff. It's so good. It's kind of slow going, but I didn't know a lot of this stuff. About all the Roman emperors. They go through a lot of the great cuckoo ones. They skip the sane ones. Mm-hmm. The cuckoo ones are the fun ones. Um, um, the stretch of road that was uncovered is 10 meters long <clears throat> and 2.9 meters wide. Although the exact date of the road is unclear, it was constructed with large stones and there was a typical design used by Romans. And similar roads have been discovered in Rome and Pompeii. The exact location has not been publicized. Of course not. I wouldn't either. But Metro reported that it was found in a field near a river where a Roman-era villa complex was found four years ago. Wow. Think how far they went on foot. I mean, it's just... How would you like that to be your assignment? You're sitting in Rome. Hey, guess what, Paddles? I need you to walk to England. Well, it was a gig. It's a job. You're part of the Roman army. I mean, okay, I get it, but it seems like a long walk home. What, what am I supposed to do when I get there? Shut up. I would just stay. <laughs> I would become British. Oh, hello. Um, hello. They're testing the road because they also want to know it's possible it could be a medieval road, but they think archaeologist Aidan Smith told Metro that all evidence seems to point to the road being Roman, but investigators are keeping their minds open. If it turns out to be medieval then it could be considered it can still be considered to be nationally significant as nothing similar has been found in Britain to date. Ooh. Yep, part of the road was dug up to be sent uh, to be tested by optically stimulated luminescence testing, which will tell researchers when the sediments were last exposed to sunlight. Wow. wow. It's believed to be near the what was the Roman city of Vertus. And the area has produced a lot of Roman archaeology over the year. It's a great, it looks perfect. There's a picture of it. We'll put it in the schnotes. Um, it's definitely a road. That, yeah. And well, how would you like to be that crew? I need you to make a road to England. Right. Start now. Because <sighs> you don't even have the amenities that are set up by the time. It's like we're forward operating bases no. in the military. This is cool. Holy shit. Archaeologists unearthed two Viking Age swords in burial ground, and they're in the rocks like this. Boom! No. Yeah. Wow. They were discovered, d- discovered during an archaeological investigation of late Iron Age burial ground, which dates from the years 600 to 1,000. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Well, the Vikings had a good run back then. I know. Didn't last forever, but... Mm-hmm. The site contains 100 graves and two burial mounds, with evidence of further burial activity indicated by the discovery of three stone tombs added centuries later into one of the mounds. Evacuations of one of the tombs revealed a large cache of gla- glass beads. Oh, that'd be cool. While in the middle of the other two tombs, archaeologists found two Viking Age swords which had been placed in s- standing upright in a shallow setting. In total, around 20 swords have been found in the village of Vasmanland. However, this first time the two swords have been found in the same burial ground, left standing untouched. How cool would that be to find that? And you know what it is immediately. Yeah. I mean, How fun. they could have been placed on the mound to honor and remember one's relatives being a physical marker that the family members could visit and touch 12,000 years ago. Sad times. Yeah, yeah that's, that's somebody. Really cool. It's very cool. I don't know if they're going to leave them. You pro- probably not. Take them out. I mean, although if it's a grave, I don't know. About, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. Yeah, leave them. I'd say leave them. Well, you got to guard it, though. Talk to Norway. Well, the government. You're going to love this, Paddles. Because this is one of your favorite things on Earth. Holy shit! They found it. So, if you ever go to Scotland. Uh uh, Like, I was in Inverness, Scotland with Lewis. And then the town square, there's a giant um, 
what do they call them? Like a no, no, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a giant like uh, round structure round round tower, like a round tower, but on top of it is a unicorn. No. Yes. And it's a unicorn, like, with his feet up in the air and then a giant horn. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, I did not know until then that the, the Nat, Scotland's national animal is a unicorn. Yeah. They all went in on that. Yeah. Right. I they like should. that. The existence of the fabled animal and the reason, because this is found fossil in Scottish Highlands spark speculation about Scotland's national animal, the unicorn. The exist. What? Yep. Ah! Yeah. Oh. See, you're not going to find this shit on your Mississippi tour. No. Nope, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> that money. We're going to talk about the Mississippi in a little bit. Because it's, it's yeah, you ain't, there's nobody going up and down right, right now. Exactly. Nobody. Too <laughs> there's no water. <laughs> it's not about it being too expensive. Well, it's helping. <laughs> 13 grand. It'll we'll take you to Memphis in a bass boat. Sir. I could get through with a bass boat, even if I had to just push paddle my way through the bad parts. The, ex- the existence of the fabled animal and the reason it is Scotland's national animal have been the subject of some speculation since archaeologists discovered what might be a fossil of an ancient unicorn in a remote area of the Scottish Highland. Yes! The yes! fossils seem to be mostly unaltered, so though some may have had their spiraled horns lost or removed. Some, not all. More excavations in the, are anticipated in the area. See, why didn't I get this? Tell me about this in college. Kathleen, <laughs> would you like to go dig for a unicorn in Scotland and live in the Highland area for a long time? Yes, I would. Uh-huh. Yes, I love rain. Yep. I love mist. I love fog. Uh-huh. I'm in. <sighs> Nobody <laughs> told me about these jobs. Nope. The find's precise location is not made public, been made public yet. Ancient Indus Valley c- civilization seals featured unicorns, and Greek natural history writers were also made mention of unicorns in their writings. The Reem, R-E apostrophe E-M, I don't know what that is, which some editions translate as unicorn, is another animal that the Bible mentions. What? One of, Yeah. Wow. One of oh. Scotland's national anim, animals, unicorns had a long history of being connected to Scottish history. In recognition of this, a unicorn is depicted on the Unite, United Kingdom's royal coat of arms. I have seen that. And I'm like, well, isn't that yes. cool? Yeah. You going to put Bigfoot on there too? Hmm? No. no, they're not. No. Although there are no solid conclusive records or evidence, there has been speculation about why this animal is so prominent in Scottish history and why the unicorn is Scotland's natural animal. Recent reports of the remains of all other unicorn species have raised the possibility that the extinct status of the unicorns is much shorter than previously thought. Yes. Yeah, they were here way longer than anybody thought. There's- the ancient unicorn fossil was later determined to be um, a Siberian unicorn. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Only five rhino species still exist today, and those with the horns. But there was one, there was once as many as 250 species that had front horns in the middle of the forehead. I love everything about this. Yep. So good. It lived on the grasslands of Eurasia from Rus- western Ukraine <laughs> to Russia to. Uh, and Siberia, and it could weigh up to 3.5 tons. Oh. The sp- oh. species eventually per- perish, though the exact time has been in dispute. One of the most important occurrences during that time for researching the last Ice Age fauna was the extinction of megafauna. Many enormous well-known species, including the woolly mammoth, the saber-toothed cat, and the Irish elk. I've seen a rendition of an I- Irish elk. Fantastic. They went, they went extinct during that time. I think I saw one, though, on the Blasket Islands. Recently? Yeah. Ten years ago. Uh, what? Mm-hmm. Because you take this rickety-ass little boat out there uh, to the Blasket Islands, and I really thought we were going to sink the whole time, but I also thought I figured I could swim because it was a sunny day. I mean, it was far, right. but I had confidence, so I wasn't too terrified of drowning. Mm-hmm. But then when the boat pulled away, and I was almost back to the mainland, mm-hmm. there was definitely the largest quote deer I've ever seen on the, you, there's no woods out there. So it's kind of barren. And if I could see it from where I'm at, how big was it? Like oh, way bigger than a Hartford elk, like monstrous. Yes. Cause I said to, there were two people from England sitting next to me. I go, you see that, right? 
I said, oh, I bet it's like a giant statue. Mm-hmm. You know, like a bronze sculpture. Yeah. And then its whole rack moved. Whoa! Whoa! I did not have binoculars. Stupid lady, I should have. <laughs> How much did you guys have a drink? <laughs> mm, I didn't have anything to drink. Oh, I took one beer in a backpack. They didn't have anything out there except coffee. Um. So... <laughs> Siberian wow. unicorn, massive real-life unicorn that walked the earth 35,000 years ago. That wasn't that long ago. Nope. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Ah, wonderful. What was that song? Long time ago when the earth was green, never more. Something the new animals, animals, animals than you've ever seen. seen. Yeah. Cats and rats and elephants. Sure, sure, you're, you're never gone. gone. You're never going to see no <laughs> unicorn. Well, man, and now they did. They did. Oh, um, all right, you think you had a bad day at work? Yes. Missing grandmother eaten alive by 22-foot-long python in Indonesia when she went to go get rubber in the forest because that was her job to get rubber. That's awful. Let's talk about the unicorn. The family of a 54-year-old woman reported her missing after she went to collect rubber on a plantation Sunday near her home in Jambai, Indonesia. The city is on the island of Sumatra, the country's second longest island. Um, Her husband went out to look look for her. He only found her sandals, jacket, headscarf, and knife. According to the chief, two days after she disappeared, a search party found a reticulated python with a large bulge in its stomach. She was found in it. After splitting the snake's belly, it turned out that the woman was missing. That was the woman who was dead. Now, see, whenever people bitch... I went to work today and somebody drank my Gatorade. I went in the break room and I get really. Well, did you get swallowed by a twenty foot long python? Because that that's happened slowly and you're alive. You're alive while it's happening. I will never complain about work when I think of that lady. All right, <laughs> I like this story. Left handed people what what are more likely to be mentally ill. Now we know why. But I'm both. But I'm mostly left-handed. left-handed. <laughs> I'm not mentally ill yet. I'm, um, I would not put insurance that it, I won't be. What's the definition of mentally ill? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> left-handed people make up only 10% of the world's population. That's crazy. Only 10% of us? <laughs> we are special. And there was never a desk that worked right. And there, now they have websites where you can get left-handed stuff. But, like, notebooks were always a problem because of the spiral. And then you always have ink all over your hand. It's, it's not a, okay. It's a pain in the ass, yeah. really. <laughs> but I don't know. Then, like, my dad would teach me, like, <laughs> sports with my right hand because he was right-handed. And, like, I'd go to throw it. He goes, that doesn't look right. I'm like, well, that's the th- that's what I want to throw it with. Right. He's like, let's try the other hand, huh? Shall oh, we? What? Yeah, so, like, golf and all that, it's all right-handed because there were no other left-handed people in the family. So I just had to do what they said. Well, then you're trouble. Well, you comply. <laughs> <laughs> you comply or you're getting kicked out of this family. <laughs> you won't be able to do stuff because they're not going to buy special left-handed baseball gloves and softball stuff or golf stuff. Right. Fishing reels are backwards. <laughs> I was fishing with my dad, and I probably, not that long ago, he goes, why are you casting like that? I go, because the reel is on the wrong side. Oh, he goes, wrong side of what? I go, my hand. I go, Dad, I'm left-handed. He goes, huh. Shut up. I'm 54. <laughs> you don't know that? He goes, well, you know, we could flip all that. Oh I'm like, well, I know we can flip the reel, but I didn't have time, and I'm totally capable but I take one extra step than him, and he didn't like the look of it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, once I told him why, he shut up. I... <laughs> Left-handed people make up only 10% of the world's population. Despite that number, 40% of all cases of severe mental illness come from less left-handed individuals. 40%. Uh, you go crazy while you're trying to learn how to do something. Yeah, everyone's confusing us. Yes. In Catholic grade schools, not during my time, but they used to beat your knuckles if you were left-handed till you, they'd beat your knuckles with rulers till you became right-handed. They wouldn't horrible. let you be left-handed. That's horrible. I never had a desk that worked. Oh. Nobody bought a left-handed oh. desk. Yeah. Scientists aren't quite sure why mental illnesses have a higher chance of manifesting in left-handed people, but they believe it could be directly tied to the way their brains are wired. Mm-hmm. Mental illness isn't something to balk at. Well, right. <laughs> Who has to write that sentence? Right. Right. In fact, most of us suffer from some kind of mental disorder or illness at some point in our lives, be it a psychotic or- disorder or depression. But... 
the fact that left-handed individuals always have a higher chance of being associated with those more severe mental illness brain has been baffling. To try to understand why might this happen, we have to look at differences between a right-handed and left-handed person. Our brains rely on a process called lateralization, which lets our bodies create areas of expertise. This separate. This is why I don't understand why people won't listen to kids when they're 13, 14, 15. If I say I suck at math and science, why don't you just believe me? Why do I have to keep paying in college to prove I'm an idiot in those subjects? You want the money? I'll give you the money. Don't make me attend. There, do, do you know what your brain is good at? Yeah. And to make kids keep... Yeah. yeah. And I always got away with it because my parents were bad. Well, my dad was bad at math and science. My mom was good at it. But because he was, he, he didn't care if I was. You get a pass. I got a pass. Yeah. yeah. But in college, you know, would you like to take algebra too? <laughs> no. Nope. I don't want to take anything. What do you want, $700? I got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, our brains rely on a brother. Okay. This separation allows for more efficient processing, and some believe it could also allow for higher chances of left people, left-handed people to experience mental illness. The cause for left-handedness in the brain comes down to a number of possibilities, things like gene or environmental stressors. Okay. What? No, you start doing stuff with your left hand, your whatever hand you're going to be, like when you're in a high chair. Right. There's no environmental stressors at that age. You don't even know what stress is. Not unless you get beaten. Right. right. If you're getting beaten, but I wasn't getting beaten. Right. As far as I know, I don't remember anybody hitting me. Recent research into the genetics important to the brain development has shown that certain genes are associated with left-handedness. As a result, those genes may also play a part in why some people, left-handed people, experience more severe mental illness. But as Big Think notes in a report, these theories are not proven, and there could be other reasons behind why left-handed individuals experience higher rates <laughs> and that are more severe. Sure. But at the moment, it does, it does appear that some of the stressors that can cause left-handedness, such as subtle brain damage, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> or even less brain lateralization can lead to higher chances of mental disorders. But that doesn't mean that being left-handed is, is bad. Well... It's not helping your day-to-day no. -day pharmaceutical charges. No. <laughs> in fact, there are a number of benefits that left-handed individuals can count on, such as increased skill at fighting and competing. What? what? Fighting? Like karate? Should I go take karate lessons and see I if I'm good love, at it? I'd love to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say that left-handed individuals are more likely than right-handed individuals to become elite athletes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. What's up, lefties? Where are my lefty termites at? Uh, let, let's see how many left-handed termites. Okay. Yeah. We'll see how many shout-outs we get. An elite athlete. Yeah. <laughs> An elite athlete. Are you kidding? No. I got to be on teams in the Ozarks because if you were just there, you got to be on a team. Um, this is super cool. I'm going to put this. This is a very short thing. I'm going to put the picture. Uh, I will put it in the show notes. Yeah. The first, this is in Minnesota, yeah. trail cams. Uh -huh. they, they have a picture of a blonde wolf. It's beautiful. Wow. Yep. Cool. A very rare coat color for wolves in this area, as we have thousands of wolves and none quite like this one. And by blonde, we mean light, creamy colored fur around the wolf's necks and shoulders. We've only seen this wolf on camera once. We don't know anything about this wolf other than it's not part of the pack in the area. We'll see if it comes on the camera again. I didn't even know there were. Yeah, I know there's red wolves and gray wolves That's and black wolves. Never heard of blonde. Minnesota? Where are my Minnesota termites? Have you guys ever seen one? Where are my Minnesota left-handed termites? <laughs> left-handed termites, yeah. Um, okay. Gosh, there's so many things. Do you have an unopened iPhone in a box from 2007? No. How about any other older one? No. Was 2007 the first year of iPhones? An unopened first-generation Apple iPhone has sold for $39,000 at an auction. This brand new 8G smartphone was released in 2007, is factory sealed, and is billed as an exceptional condition. How much for my old BlackBerry? It's open, and I dropped it a lot. June 29th, 2007. Oh, okay, so it's the very first one. See when the very first BlackBerry was made. I bet I got it. I bet I have it. All my shit's always wrecked, though. It won't be in good condition. Um, 2002. Yeah. 2002? Yep. Mm. From Canada. From Canada. Mm -hmm. The 5810. 
the 5810. I'll go have to go look. Well, if you have any old iPhones in your closet, this one starting bid started at 2500 bucks, went up to 39000 Yeah, but why does somebody still have one in a box? Probably for stuff like that. If it's a first generation, you can get two. I don't know how he ran the thing back then. Um, can we just talk about, I, I got to figure out what's going on right now. I haven't had time to check on these people. I don't know why <laughs> this is not funny, but it's because it's not something I would do to, on my own accord unless I had little kids and they made me. Th I would, I'm not a dizzy person. We have talked about this on this podcast. Uh -huh. I understand why people like it. I had to go as a young person and it destroyed, I couldn't get out of Cinderella's castle. No, no Snow White. Whose castle is it? I always forget. Cinderella. It's Cinderella's? But yeah, but Snow White's the one at Disney World, the big one. Because that's... Cinderella's. It's Cinderella? Yes, God, I, did I didn't watch this, these no, shows when I was a kid and I didn't read these kind of books. I read animal things and then I watched Hogan's Heroes with my dad. Okay. And Bewitched. Hold on, my blanket fell down. Excuse me one second. They have the dead blanket out. Fell down. <laughs> wow. I'm an elite athlete. Elite athlete. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, the, I don't know what's going on with COVID, Schmovid, in China, but they locked down Wuhan again. And then get what? this. Thousands are barred from leaving Shanghai Disneyland as entire resort is locked down over COVID but at least guests can still ride the seven dwarves mine train. <laughs> this would be my fucking nightmare. Oh my God. Oh my God. They were told, I'm going to read this, but they were told, they heard about it and they all started running to get out uh -huh. and they locked them in. Oh, they're horrifying. Well, it's also really expensive. How long am I going to stay here and pay 18 bucks for a Coke? A, a soda. Shanghai Disneyland, barred th they barred thousands of people from leaving the Magic Kingdom after locking down the entire resort due to a COVID outbreak. All visitors at the park at the time of the announcement have been ordered to stay inside until they can prove a negative test for the virus. Footage shared on Weibo showed panicked guests rushing towards the park's gate gates ah. to escape, only to find them locked. Around 60,000 visitors were in the park. The resort said... And this was on Halloween. Uh, it would immediately shut the main theme park and surrounding areas, including shopping street streets, until further notice to comply with the virus continues. Yep. The Shanghai government said on its official website that the park was barring people from entering or ex exiting, and all visitors inside would need to await the results of their test before they could leave. Anyone who visited the park would also need before October since October twenty seventh would also need to test for COVID three times in a day. Oh. Whew, the theme park wow. continued to operate rides for visitors stuck in the closure. Right, but... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I bet kids liked it. Oh. But where do you stay? Do they have hotels in there? Probably not. Probably, not. Yeah, probably in the teacups. You stay in the teacups. The resort said Sunday that it started operating with a reduced workforce to comply with COVID. Oh, but it's going to be COVID measures, so there's not going to be anybody working there. Oh, the closure marks the latest disruption for the Shanghai Disney Resort, which was shut for over three months during Shanghai's lockdown earlier this year. The park was also closed in November for a couple of days with 30,000 30, visitors stuck inside. Well, what, here's, what's a measure. here's what the message is, Chinese folks. I wouldn't go in there. Not if they can lock me in. They can lock you in anywhere. Yeah, but I will fine. Lock me in my apartment. That's so better than being locked in... Disneyland, and now there's like one person doling out cotton candy. There's 60,000 people in line for a hamburger. Right. Well, sure. probably not what they're eating, but, you know, <laughs> I just made it American. Whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know. Rising case numbers from the numerous outbreaks in China have prompted a tightening of local curb and lockdowns, including big parts of big cities such as the southern metro. Uh, uh, metropolis of Gongzhou. That's horrifying. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Is there something going on over there that we're not being told? Well, like, is it a crazy virus? Something new? I don't know. We should save that. All right. Or talk to Disney over here. 
I keep saying we're going to talk about the Mississippi, so we're going to do it. Yeah. And then I've got a funny story at the end. Great. <laughs> it's our feel-good story. 1,500 barges uh, stuck in vital Mississippi, Mississippi shipping lanes as water drop, levels drop precipitously low. Right. 1,500 barges are stuck. <sighs> They carry, you ever wonder what those barges are carrying? Food, industrial materials, they've been clogged. They've also had to go dredge a whole thing in the su- southern part of Mississippi so the salt water doesn't come in. Um, vast areas of the river's headwa- uh, watershed, including its headwaters up in north and various tributaries, are experiencing moderate to extreme drought. The kind of conditions climate scientists say will become more common as the planet heats up. The recent drought has pushed revel- uh, water levels so low. It also revealed a shipwreck from more than 100 years ago. Wow. Uh-huh. There's a place in Missouri where you can walk out to this rock that as a kid, you could only get out there if you had a boat. I mean, it was just impossible. Because the Mississippi, the current is ridiculously strong. It's Yeah, you're going to probably, yeah, in parts of it, you won't make it. And you can walk out to the thing now. Wow. Yeah. I told my friend, um, Heidi, get your ass out there and yeah. take a video for me. <laughs> Come on. Um the U.S. Army of Engineers has been dredging problem areas along the Mississippi to keep the water flow and shipping, but the river's problems may only grow more challenging in the coming months as the drought is expected to continue. The Midwest has gotten no, well, everywhere, but really. Shipping chaos, the cost of transporting goods has caused in recent months, including factories and farms sc- trying to scramble ways of um, distributing their products. It's a mess, and it's not getting any better. America's going to shut down if we shut down. The Mississippi water levels are so record lows and it's wreaking havoc on one of the U.S. most critical supply chains. Mm-hmm. Whenever I see a barge, it just seems so old-timey. Yeah. I'm like, what's in there? Yeah. Well, sometimes I see them in Nashville on the Cumberland River. It's coal. Mm-hmm. And then big piles of what looks like sand. I don't know if it is sand, but it looks like sand. Maybe. I don't know. Um, Maybe. Around 500 million tons of supplies are ferried along the Mississippi every year with trade value worth of $130 billion. Many agricultural products like corn, soybeans, along with fuel products. Mississippi River Basin produces more than 90% of the U.S. agricultural exports and nearly 80% of the world's grain exports. Uh Uh-oh. That's going to be a problem. Nobody's getting their cereal. Why? What's this do to my Fruit Loops? Hmm? Uh, two th- it, now they're up to 2,000 barges were backed up along the river last week. What do you think this does to your cruise? Paddles your $13,000 cruise. You ain't going anywhere. No. Nope. No, nope, you're so sad. Mm-hmm. You have to mark it down. I'm just telling you, we need to keep an eye on that. Army Corps of Engineers building a 1,500-foot wide levee to keep salt water out of the drinking water. If it goes that low, then guess what comes in? And that's, guess what comes with, with salt water? Shocks. Shocks. There have been sharks in the Mississippi River. They no. can, yes, giggle it, Google it. I'm not lying. It, the Mississippi can be brackish. They can live in brackish water. I know. Yes, people think you're safe to go swimming. Not really. Not safe. No, not really. No. Um, all right. This is my funny, <laughs> funny story. Before I gotta sign off. Um. <laughs> no, this is a good one. Well, I have a sad one. Yeah. You want the sad one? And then but, the happy one. But it also, it might make me cry. Okay. Be prepared. Let me see. Okay, well, end on happy. Well, I know, but this is a short one. Okay. It's a fascinating little thing. You can go watch the video. Okay. Grief-stricken monkey, grief-stricken wild monkey gives human friend who fed him every day a kiss as he tries to rever- revive him during his funeral. Oh, no. Told you it was sad. Oh. This is the heart-touching moment when a grief-stricken wild monkey gave his human friend a final kiss and then tried to revive him at the funeral. He jumped in the casket. Oh, that's sad. Uh-huh. Oh. Before his death, Pita Bramaram Rajan, 56 years old, fed the wild gray langer every day with fruit and biscuits at his forest-side home in Sri Lanka. And mourners thought that the monkey should be able to go to the funeral. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, let him know. They're smart enough. But then he knows he's gone. Instead of just wondering the rest of his life, where's my friend? We tried to revive him so he knew he wasn't breathing. We are taking this to a different level. 
It's important. When mourners brought the monkey to the funeral, they were amazed at how strong the bond would become. Oh, and he patted him down. Here's a video. It's very sad. He perched on the edge of the open coffee. It gently cupped his chin as trying to figure out why his friend was so still. Video footage reached by a mourner at the head of the coffin shows the monkey leaning in trying to hug his human benefactor. Then he leans over the coffin and plants a kiss on his face and grabs his hands as if trying to lead him away and wake him up. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh, oh. They, the eventually, mourners gently carried the distressed monkey away from the coffin. Yep. Just shows you, monkeys, on this podcast, monkeys have gotten a lot of bad stories told about them. Right. The <laughs> gangs of monkeys yes. throwing babies off rooftops, doing very mean things. Mm-hmm. And clearly, if you are nice... Super nice. They'll come to the funeral. Yeah, but at least he knows. Yeah. Okay. This is this one made me laugh because this is from Fortune magazine. So you pretty much figure these people are older. Yeah. And uh, Google what the exact years of Gen Zs are, please. Because sometimes people use all these terms really Same. wrong. Very liberal. Mm-hmm. Uh, exact ages. Don't, I don't need the years, paddles. I can't do that math. How old are they? 97. So they're 27. To what? Oh, paddles, you don't Google these things. Wait, what? No, you just ask the giggle machine. How old are Gen Zers? What are the ages of Gen Zers? Oh, my gosh. Um... I can't. 27. 27 to how old? 27 to 30. They're born from 1981 to 1996. What? No. I'm sorry, Gen. Oh, I need Gen Z. I put in Gen X. Gen Z. See? This is why I can't even do this. 97 to 2012. 97 to 2012. Mm, right. 2012. So they're 27 to what years old? 2012? No, those are the Zoomers. How old are people in Gen Z? Oh, they can go as young as what? Right. Yeah. Well, then who are the Zoomers? Under 10? <coughs> no, Zoomers are, are they're what? No. no. Oh, Gen Z. Yeah. Roughly 10 to 25 years old. Right. All right. Said. What is the Zoomer age range? Six to twenty-four. What? Oh, they're saying, I don't know. Whatever. We're gonna go with ours. Yeah. Most Gen Zers are between. Somebody wrote this article. Megan Leonhart wrote, "Managing Gen Z is like working with people from a different country." Yeah, <laughs> but it's not bad. I, I like them. Yeah. As more, but I like it because they just won't do shit and you got to work around it. Right. And then eventually they'll set the new norm that we don't have to do things the way we used to do. Cause some of it's super archaic and stupid right. as more members of Gen Z enter the workforce. It can feel like battle lines are being drawn between younger employees and more established workers. Managers routinely call this generation entitled complaining. They can't <laughs> complete simple tasks. Meanwhile, Gen Z is frustrated that employers are merely paying lip service to issues like mental health support, pay equity, corporate responsibility, and diversity. Gen Zers right now are between 12 and 26. Between 12 and 26. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you want out of a 20 or 26 year old? I mean, they're still in their parents' health insurance. Well, right, it's the parents. Right. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I also don't expect a 12 year old to complete any task. What are we talking about here? Jen, and I do like, though, they're like, <laughs> that they won't complete a task. Until you get me some mental health support, I just can't finish this. Your nieces and nephews could do anything. They could complete things. Gen Z may be facing similar hurdles to the ones millennials did when they started to enter the workforce. It feels like every new generation is called lazy by the older workers. Yeah, because, like, if you go all the way back, you know, the coal miners are going to look at people that work at, in town at a store is lazy. Like, you're not really working that hard. Coal miners. <laughs> well, All the coal miners. <laughs> well, there's some out there. <laughs> <laughs> but they're also facing an even bigger challenges amid the backdrop of COVID-19 pa- pandemic and a rapidly evolving work culture. 
says Lindsay Pollock, a leading career and workplace expert. Everyone has been through a different pandemic and a different experience. With Gen Z, I think we have to acknowledge they were enduring a pandemic at a very specific point in their life and in their careers. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't bother mine. I'm in the good age range for a pandemic. I'm Because I'm already sad. I'm not retired. Like, people like Stevie, all the old people were freaking out because it's their last five years to go on the road, mm-hmm. you know. And then the young people are like, these are my 20s. I'm supposed to stay home on my 21st birthday. <laughs> I agree with that, though. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, they endure the bit of it. And that means probably more well well-being support that means more being more explicit about expectations gen z attitudes that may come across as lazy or entitled to a more seasoned worker old person are actually just different values and different approaches sometimes it's simply a matter of taking the time to teach gen z employees about things that might have been considered common sense for other (laughs) generations tasks like making small talk with a client oh none of them will get on the phone i know that but i'm okay with that Only use the phone if it's an emergency. They just want to be emailed or texted. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I can do that. Um, They'll never leave a voicemail. Even better. Make a small talk with a client or writing a professional email that is a a no-brainer for those who have been employed for years. Too many in this generation, they didn't grow up doing those things or have been out of practice during the pandemic. It's like each generation is from a different country. You don't speak the same language. You don't have the same customs. You may know how to do your job here in the U.S., but if your boss sent you to Dubai, you would probably have to change a few things because it's a different culture. You're smart, but there are some differences that would require adjustments along the way. Um, You have to remember to ask to or educate people about the things you expect them to do at work. It's just a different understanding that common sense. Here, I had to holler and scream at a couple people that I've worked with uh, comedy-wise that are working basically for me, mm-hmm. and they will not, I have to make them call the person. Yeah. Well, because they'll go, well, I sent an email. I'm like, right, but we didn't get an answer. And you know, well, I sent another one. <laughs> okay, well, we're still not getting an answer. Okay, and sometimes you do have to pick up the phone. <laughs> to them, it's like me doing math. I'll do anything to avoid it. I don't want, I'll do every chore in the house before I have to sit down and deal with finances. Right. But they just don't, I'm like, sometimes, because you don't know how all the other person is we're working at. It's such, such theater said and said, which production person. Right. Maybe that person's 58, right. and they're waiting on a call. They, don't give two shits about what you're they haven't checked their email except on Sundays. Right. Hello. <laughs> um, they don't, I will say they don't like the phone, but I don't, I get it. If you didn't, if you just grew up texting, why would you even think to call someone? Right. It's a different understanding for common sense. Um. And then it just goes into why everybody can't, because the old people don't feel like they should have to say that. True. Like if you send somebody an email three times, I would just tell them twice, really, two emails, and then you use that bullshit passive aggressive bumping this to the top of your inbox. <laughs> oh Christ! When I see that, I want to strangle the person on the other end. Bumping this to the top of your inbox. Oh, I saw it. I saw it every single time. Bump. I just haven't had the time, or I don't want to answer you. But I would say if you send an email twice mm-hmm. and nobody answers, you got to pick up the phone. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah, no. 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 I think they pray no one answers on the other end. <laughs> All right, termites. Mm-hmm. Had a wonderful time in Oroville, California. If you don't know where that's at, quite frankly, I didn't. It's about an hour outside Sacramento Casino. Totes mm-hmm. fun. Nice. Gold country. Yeah, I had a blast. I always love every casino game. Sadly, I did not have time to gamble. I had two shows. Oh. I had two shows. I know. That's terrible. What? Terrible. It is terrible. Yeah. What are you going to do? Out there working for a night. Um, the people were nice. The people were great. The whole gig was great. Um, and I'm heading to Warren, Ohio, which is about an hour in between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Yeah. By, the Canton, uh, By the Canton Hall of Fame. There you go. Yeah. And then to Cincinnati, or as my dad says, sitting at Cincinnati. I don't know why he says that like that. It drives me crazy, though. Cincinnati to the Taft Theater. And I've been going there forever and ever. And I have all my favorite spots. And I'm totally excited to go to Cincinnati. Nice. Yeah. I have a lot of little tiny places I like to go. What else do you do there? What do I do? Well, all the times I've been in Cincinnati, I've gone, I go to this place, um, 
uh, a bar I like. I've gone to Reds games. Nice. Yeah, Fun. it's like a dollar to get in. <laughs> the yeah. Reds, the Reds are struggling. Um, they have like an artsy fartsy district. You can walk around. It's just fun. The fun downtown. I walk along the river, and then I walk over the bridge to Covington, Kentucky, because there's all the old homes that are super pretty. Cool. You can walk around those neighborhoods and then walk back on a different bridge. It's a wonderful little walking area. All right, termites, that's all I got. That's all I got. Tell me if you're left-handed. Nice. Tell me. There was something else I asked termites to chime in on. Oh, should I stay on Twitter? Yeah. Do I give Elon eight bucks? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a pitcher of beer at my lake bar. Oh, yeah. That's a if Elon walked in, would I buy him a pitcher of beer? No, I would not. But would I do it if I could keep all my friends in the bar? Yes, I would. Okay. Cool. So I, 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 it's keeping my little pals. Nice. He's, he's keeping my – that's why he did that. Yeah. Wow. wow. On, live and on air. Live and on air. I figured out the scheme. Yeah. It never happened before. Or do I just trust that my termites know me and no. not pay for the check mark? Well, I don't know. I think it's a little weird. You've got eight bucks. I do have eight <laughs> bucks. It's the principle. <laughs> okay. um, whenever a multi-zillionaire asks me for money, I have to think about it. Okay. Why am I giving Elon Musk, who's one of the richest people in the world, eight dollars? They, I said, I read what they, they said you get if you have a, a check mark. Um, you get nothing that I care about. I mean, there wasn't anything on there where I, I like Twitter the way it is. We'll see, termites. Yeah. Makes sense. What you gonna do when they come for you, bad boy? Mm-hmm. Bad boy. All right, that's it. Ready? <gasps> that was cops, by the way. Yes. What you gonna do when they come for you, bad boy? Bad boy. Not I. That's it. Uh, I started White Lotus. I don't like it as much as the first season. No? Nope. Nope. It's in Italy, which I thought could be super interesting. I don't know. Kind of. I love Jennifer Coolidge, so I'll give it another whack. But can't say I love it. Other than that, I've not been around the television. Okay. Termites. Night, night, termites. <laughs>